Lewis structure of cesium bromide. This is a staircase on the periodic table that separates metals from non-metals. Cesium is a metal because it comes from the left-hand side of the staircase. Bromine is a non-metal. It comes from the right-hand side of the staircase. When a metal and a non-metal bond together, you get an ionic compound, which is a transfer of electrons from the metal to the non-metal. Let's see how that's going to work. Cesium is in group one. It has one valence electron, so draw the symbol with one dot around it. That's one electron in its outer shell. Bromine is in group 17. It brings seven valence electrons. Draw yourself a BR with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots around it. Now, non-metals, except for hydrogen, want eight electrons in their outer shell to be stable. It's called the octet rule. And here, bromine brought seven, and it, if it needs eight, it only needs one more electron to complete its octet. Cesium happens to bring one electron with it. So cesium will transfer its electron to bromine. More likely, bromine steals the electron away from cesium. And what you end up with is a cesium atom that has no electrons in what was its outer shell. That means you have a plus one charge because you lost a negatively charged electron. Subtracting a minus gives you a plus charge. And bromine, which had seven dots or electrons to start with, now has its eighth and it is stable as well. This gives it a charge of minus one. And this here with the square brackets representing the ions and the charges written in the top right-hand corners is the completed Lewis structure for cesium bromide. All metal, non-metal Lewis structures will look something like this because they are ionic compounds. That one was easy. Maybe you have a tougher one coming up. Who knows? Best of luck.